Um, this is Romans 9 and 23. Go ahead. Matter of fact, 22. <laughs> what if the Lord, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had a full prepared unto glory. That's why when it talks about the mercy of the Gentiles, you being a Hebrew Israelite, you could never understand that mercy. Why? Because you're an Israelite. It was given to you from the jump. But this form of mercy that the Heavenly Father gave to the Gentiles is a different form of mercy. And Paul, Paul goes into it. Go ahead. It says, even us whom he have called... Not of the Jews only, yeah, but who, also of the Gentiles. Who, who has he called? He's called the children of Israel. But he's saying he it is going to be some that are going to be called by his name. That's in the scriptures. Continue on. But not us only, but also of the Gentiles. Go ahead. As he saith also in Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people, yep. and her beloved, which was not beloved. So he's saying as it was said in Hosea. So we know that when you go to the book of Hosea, he was talking to Israelites that he rejected. But the Lord, the scriptures are saying that the Lord is going to do the same thing with the Gentiles. Read that again. And he saith also in Hosea, I will call them my people. Verse up. Even whom, even us, whom he have called, yep. not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. But also of the Gentiles. Go ahead. Um, as he saith also in Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people. So that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a trick that's in his bag to call these people, his people that is not his people. Go ahead. Yeah. I gave it as an example. It says, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. There shall they be called the children of the living power. That's in his power to do. This is the reason why he said, I have, he told Moses, I have mercy on whom I have mercy and compassion on whom I have compassion. So it's not of him that willeth. Right? No, Good. Not running, but the most high that show mercy. That's the most high that show of mercy. Go ahead. Isaiah also cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant, a remnant shall be yeah, saved. Only a remnant of the nation of Israel is going to be delivered. The rest are going to be wiped out, totally annihilated from off the face of the earth. Go ahead. Con. And it says, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Go ahead. And Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been at Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. Yeah, if the Heavenly Father didn't have mercy on the nation of Israel, the nation of Israel would have been as Sodom and Gomorrah, meaning totally wiped, wiped out. out. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Con, what should we say then? That the Gentiles, which follow not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness. Yeah, you know what's so funny about that? That, that quote right there? You being an Israelite, man, understand that the, that the women of the other nations are ten times better than Shaquisha and, and Shakita, that the, the women that you deal with. So you run, you, you immediately cast her to the side and go run to a white woman or go run to a... a, a Ethiopian woman or or, or, or or Asian woman that's going to be totally submissive or, or, or Asian woman that's going to be totally submissive. Listen to everything you do, cook your meals, clean your food, give you no attitude and lip. But to have you won't give that same respect to the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father is supposed to just take Shaquisha just because she's of the seed of Abraham and, and, and Israel because you know what I'm saying just because they they they're Israelites and totally neglect neglect the righteousness. Of this other person based off of their nation Even though God created all of them It doesn't make sense Here we go again with the Boston reprobates I want to say all praise to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone This video will be entitled Response I will call them my people Which were not my people Okay And we're going to you know, get the understanding of that <clears throat> Because you know as I said in the other video, we did a video marking these guys. I did a video marking these guys. And, you know, brothers are doing a beautiful job of, um, you know, exposing these dudes further. And going, you know, now we're starting to go into some of their doctrinal things that they're going off on. All right. So their whole ministry now is geared towards trying to prove that heathens can be saved, trying to save the other nations. <clears throat> And that Gentile demon, you know, is on these dudes, man. They just got the Gentile demon. They can't get it. It's like you would expect that dudes that have been in the truth, and especially as the main dude, uh, I think he goes by the name of Zion, formerly of GMS Boston, and Levi standing to his left, the right of your screen. As long as they've been in the truth, you would think they knew that. But see, what happens is they got to, you know, try to get too deep. 
and they got tangled up in the precepts and then Satan blinded their minds now and they think every time in the New Testament where they read about Gentiles, they think it's the other nations and it's not, okay? Salvation pertaining to Gentiles is Israelite foreigners. It's, I mean, it's, it's really odd. Or I'll say it's amazingly odd. It's amazing and odd that, you know, sometimes when dudes fall out of the truth, you expect that, that when they when they proclaim themselves these teachers, are they gonna get the, you know they're gonna bring forth this understanding? You think that they're gonna say something different, and they're not saying anything different. They, they just got caught by the same demons, the same stumbling blocks that other men before them have tripped over or got or got caught by, and they may you know they're just doing it in a different way. So now these guys are taking obvious scriptures that are obviously talking about it. I mean, I'm, when I say obvious. I mean, if you know the real truth, if you've been in, if you've been in the truth, if you've been in the camp, you know certain 101 basic Hebrews like 101 scriptures. You are now confused by them, and you'll see that in this video. So, no further ado, let's go into it because you've seen these guys reading Romans nine, and Romans nine tells you in the in the same chapter. That everything belongs to the Israelites, but yet they still trying to apply it to other nations. And I think they started in Romans 9, 22. So it says, what if the Most High, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known and do it with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. So two groups are being spoken of here. The vessels of wrath fitted to destruction are the Edomites. Esau, Edom. That's why up here. The scripture started, started talking about Jacob and Esau in Romans 9, 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. Then the Most High goes into the whole account. And he even, he referred back to what, you know, with Moses. But when he got here to verse 21, he says, I'm sorry, verse 22, right? Because in verse 21, he says, hath not the powder power over the clay of the same lump. See, they came from the same lump, Jacob and Esau. Two polar opposites in different destinations in judgment, right? And in eternity. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? The vessel of honor was Jacob. The vessel of dishonor is Esau. What if the Most High willing to show his wrath and to make his power known and do it with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? And you see this semicolon right here? Or either it's a colon, I can't remember which one is which, but it's, you know, it's not a period. So there's more coming after it. The vessels of wrath fitted to destruction are the Edomites. Then he says, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Who's the vessels of mercy? That's Jacob. Which he had a fore prepared on the glory. Comma. There's more. Even us whom he hath called. Not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Who is this speaking of? It's all talking about the same group. I got to read it again. Verse 23, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us. See, there's a comma right here after glory. Not a period. It's not a new thought. It's the same thought. And there were two groups that were spoken of was the vessels of wrath, the Edomites, the vessels of mercy, the Israelites. And the Israelites are going to come in two groups right here in this next sentence. Even us whom he hath called, us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, the Israelites from the Holy Land, right? But also of the Gentiles, the scattered Israelites, the Israelite foreigners. Now, before we go to the next verse, when he says right here, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had prepared, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Who gets the glory? Do other nations get the glory? No. It tells you that when you read up top in the same chapter, Romans 9 and verse 3. For I wish that myself were cursed from the anointed for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory. So that glory is for Israelites. And the covenants, Israelites, and the giving of the law, and the service of the Most High, 
and the promises. See that? So that glory that these dudes are trying to say, <laughs> which is telling you all this in the same chapter, man. Let's read it again. Romans 9, 23, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore beforehand prepared unto glory. No other nations is getting no other nation is getting glory other than Israelites. We just showed you that even us whom he hath called. This is a continuation, not of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles, same people group. It's just said that way because what you have the Israelites from the Holy Land. And then you have those exiled Israelites that's coming back into the fold. That's all it is. They, they're called Gentiles. Do I have to prove that further? And it's almost like the basic Hebrew Israelite scriptures that, that, that brothers read and that we know, it's almost as if they never almost is as if they never read them. First Corinthians twelve and two. Ye know that ye were Gentiles. Carried away into these dumb idols, even as ye were led, right? So we know that Israelites can be called Gentiles. And whenever you have Israelites scattered among the nations, living after the ways of the other nations, they are called Gentiles, right? They were scattered among the nations. That's who. And whenever you see these dudes, dudes like them and dumb black Christians, they all do the same thing. It's almost like they, they're trying to run game. With these dudes, I tend to think that they're up to something. That they just didn't get confused, you know. I think they're up to something. But that's always been a trick of Esau Edom. These dudes could have just been plants. They'll plant guys in a group, right? And then they become, you know, when the, when the camp get a lot of notoriety and a lot of eyes get on them, those plants supposed to come from among the group and make like they, they discovered something in the doctrine that made them change their mind. And this will lead other people to do the same thing. It changed their mind. Oh, you know what? Them brothers, they was in the they was in the, one of the top camps. The way them Boston brothers break the scriptures down, and they changed their mind. Something wrong with their doctrine, you know? No, there's nothing wrong with the doctrine. Either these dudes, you know, which Satan's in their minds. But it's always funny when it's a clique of guys, when it's four dudes. That make you think. Just like you ain't gonna have four guys just wake up together at the same time and just come into the camp. So it's highly unlikely that four dudes at one time, I mean, what, I can't really say that, but because we had more people fall out at one time. But it's just a little weird, you know, a little strange. But they start trying to apply all the scriptures, the, the Hebrew Israelite 101 things, things that are basic and easy to understand. They start making them more difficult. You just saw that. Now let's go to verse 25. As he saith also in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not my, which was not beloved. And this dude literally said that the most I had some kind of trick or something, he, <laughs> something he was trying to pull. I don't remember exactly how he said it. It's not a trick. It's not a trick. It's just the way that it's written, and it's the way the Lord doing things. As He said also in OC, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her her beloved. Which was not my beloved, right? And he literally sat there and said that Hosea was talking about Israelites. But they read certain things and they try to apply it to the other to the other nations. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. It's only talking about Israelites. You can just go real quick, just go right to Hosea 1 and read it. Verse 10. Yet the children of the number, excuse me, of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. This is only Israelites. It can't apply to nobody else. And then it names them, names them. Then after that shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel, or uh, Yashariah, I believe is how you say it. And I might be wrong on the pronunciation, but it, it means Israel. Great shall be the day of Jezreel. So it just told you plainly, them that are not a people, right? But we can keep reading. 
Let's go back. Romans 9, 27. Esaias also cried concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. And the way that this dude said it, only a remnant of them going to be saved. The rest going to be cut off. Yeah, but the other nations ain't going to be added to it. The two thirds are going to come back in the kingdom. That's the meaning of, and all Israel shall be saved. That you read about in Romans 11. And I, and I can't wait till they go into Romans 11 because they're going to, they're going to butcher that all up. It's just completely ridiculous. Right? Now let's keep reading because they went, they read on down. Verse 28. He will, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. He's going to finish the work when it's all the Israelites. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabbath oath had left us a seed, we had been in Sodom and been like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then that the Gentiles, what Gentiles? The ones that he mentioned up above, which we're talking about the Israelite foreigners, which follow not after righteousness. What, what, how were they not following after righteousness? They were... Worshipping idols. They were cast off among the nations. They were raised in the ways of the other nations. They weren't following, you know, after righteousness. They had no idea. Have attained unto righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith, right? When they when they learned about it, like we have, now they're doing it by faith, not by the keeping of the law. We know that. But Israel, which is the same group, but a different group, because it's the Israel from the Holy Land. Right, which were the ones who were trying to follow after the law. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Whosoever believeth, that's talking still about Israelites. All of this was speaking of Israelites. Never once in this chapter or in the verses that we read, in verses that we read, because he did mention Esau up in the, in the, you know, up in the top and whatever. But in the verses that we've been reading from Romans 9 and 22, right? Well, he did mention the vessels of wrath, which is the Edomites. But outside of that, Everybody that he was only talking about Israelites the whole time. It was never talking about another nation. And even when you go to Romans 10, it continues on talking about the Israelites. It continues talking about only Jacob. Right up here at the top, the word of faith brings salvation. Romans 10 and 1, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to the most high for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of the Most High, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of the Most High's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of the Most High. Okay? And then when you start jumping down here in, in other verses, right, even when you get here, then we're going to start around right about verse 11. For the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him shall be shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. What's this Greek mean, really? Even if you don't look up the word, because sometimes Esau fuck with the definitions to make you think that it's talking about something else. These Greeks were what? Israelites, the Hellenized Israelites from all the different nations. It wasn't talking about no Greeks, no literal Greek people. Right? For the same Lord is rich is over all, Salakia. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now we just read that in Romans 9. The continuation of, you know, in the bottom of the um, let me see if I can bring it, get it back up. Yeah. Down here at the bottom. Romans 9. 33, as it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. The whole thing was dealing with only the Israelites, the Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners, as we demonstrated. And Israel represented the Israelites from the Holy Land, not the exiles, not the exiled Israelites. That's all it meant. But see, Jake is getting caught up on, you know, that Gentile thing. You're trying to push that. 
because you know that's that that uh people will get confused by it. Or well, Satan knows that people get confused by it, but when you read it with understanding, you ain't gonna get tripped up. And it, as it goes on, it tells you. Let's read a little more. So it said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So the Most High, through Paul, brings up preachers right here. Who are they going to preach to? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. This, these dudes literally said earlier in that video, which I didn't include it, that the gospel, right, the gospel was to all people. That when we say that the Most High only talking to Israel, that ain't the gospel. They ain't steadily going off, man. Steadily going off. It says again, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who have believed our report? Now, the gospel is this. Matthew 24 <clears throat> and 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. What's part of the gospel of the kingdom? That other nations are going to go into captivity. Right? We all know that. Let's go back. This is the gospel of the kingdom that we preach. Nations are going to go into captivity. We're going to have power. Over the nations, as the Lord told us. Let's continue on reading. I don't want to get, you know, too sidetracked. Excuse me. So again, verse 17 says, So then faith coming by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Most High. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. This is why. So that the word will reach, as we just read it, the gospel must be preached among um, un, unto all nations, then shall the end come. The Israelites are scattered in all the nations. Listen further, but I say, did not Israel know? First, Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. So who is this speaking of? Well, let's go real quick. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 32 and 26. Listen, I said I would scatter them into corners. Who is it speaking of? Who got scattered? The Israelites. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say our hand is high and the Lord hath not done all this. See, so the Most High said if, if it wouldn't have been for the other nations, they would have pu got puffed up. The Most High said he would have removed us in the corners and took away the remembrance or that he would have removed the remembrance of them, make the remembrance of, the, of us to cease from among men. But he said he didn't want the enemies, which are the other nations, the adversaries of the Israelites, to get puffed up. He says, were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely and lest they should say, our hand is high and the Lord had not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel Neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they should understand this, or like that, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock, which is the, the word rock here, capital R, is referring to a, our God. Except their rock has sold them and the Lord has shut them up. For their rock, for their rock, now it's talking about Esau, Edom, capital R, I'm sorry, for their rock, lowercase r, the God of the Edomites, is not as our rock, capital R, the most high, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. So it's talking about Esau, Edom right there, right? And I just wanted to, you know, go back real quick here. Just bear with me. Um, Yeah. So as you can see down there, it's talking about Jacob, right? And then Esau being those uh, serpents or those grapes of gall. Now, if you look up here, talking about Israelites, check this out. Deuteronomy 32, 15. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. 
Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook the Most High which made him and lightly esteemed the rock, capital R, of his salvation. They provoke him to jealousy with strange gods. With, with abominations provoke with, with abominations provoke they him to anger. This is what the Israelites did. They sacrificed in the devils not to the Most High. You even read that when you read in the book of Baruch. The Most High said he scatters among the nations because we sacrifice in the devils and not to the Most High. They sacrifice in the devils and not to the Most High. Matter of fact, just bear with me here. I'm trying to think of uh, where it is. They were delivered. You were delivered into the enemy. Let's go there. So this is uh let's go to Baruch. Baruch 1, I believe it is. Let's go to verse 19. Um Let's go to chapter 2. Can we get chapter 2? I don't see what I wanted. Uh, just bear with me, brothers. Let's try Daniel. <clears throat> Daniel, chapter 9. Let's see here. Sacrificed. Unto devils. I know it's got to be in Baruch. <clears throat> Come on, baby. Give me what I want. Table of con content contents. I thought for sure it was in the book of Baruch. Um, one. Baruch 119, since the day that the Lord brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt until this present day, we have been disobedient unto the Lord, our power, and we have been negligent in not hearing his voice. No, it's not what I want. Baruch, is it four? Yeah, um, yeah, this is it, Salakia. Baruch 4 and 6. We'll start at 5. Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel. Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved the most high to wrath, ye were delivered unto the enemies. This is why we got sent into captivity. For you provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to the most high. See that? So we know that phrase in Deuteronomy. Let's talk about Israelites. Verse 17, Deuteronomy 32, 17, they sacrificed in the devils, not to the Most High, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten the Most High to form thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not the most high. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Who is this talking about? Is this talking about the other nations? No. The Israelites in the Holy Land would get provoked to jealousy by, by, by what? When the Most High had the gospel, lo, we turn to the Gentiles, right? Seeing you put it from you, lo, we turn to the Gentiles, which are who? Israelite foreigners. Let me read this again. It says, they have moved me to jealousy. What's the lock here? They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not the Most High. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy 
with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with their foolish nation. So when you read in Romans 9 again, and it said that, uh, 9.26, And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there you shall be called the children of the living God. Right? And it even continued on, and he told you, he, uh, he told you this right here in verse 27. That is the children of Israel. Then we went to Hosea 1 and 10 and read it. Same phrase. Right? You are the sons of the living God. Now let's go to. Just bear with me here. This is. All right. We can do away with that one. First Peter. Right? And verse. We'll just go right here to uh, First Peter 2 and 9. It says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, unholy nation. Who's a holy nation? The Israelites. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy power. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are on the, upon the face of the earth. Everybody know those. Deuteronomy 14 and 2. This is who what Peter's talking about. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord, Yahweh, hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the face of the earth. So we read in 1 Peter 2 and 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. This is Israelites. Nobody would argue with that. That ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people. Right? I will call them my people which were not my people, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of the Most High, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And this dude literally said that the mercy wasn't for the Israelites. We had it already. The mercy was the other nations. Hell no. <laughs> Definitely not. The mercy is for the Israelites. And everything we read pretty much we talked about mercy. Even when it said Gentiles it was all Israelites. That's why I do just out there, man, bugged out. Bugged out. You see? I will call them my people which were not my people as all Israelites. And then when we go back to Romans 10, when it talked about the gospel... Right? Let's go back. Romans 10, 19 again now. But I say, did not Israel know? First, Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation will I anger you. We read that in Deuteronomy. Who was it? Israelites. Right? It's right there, man. And then, and then when you go back up, let's read this. Because this shows you that gospel being preached to every creature and going into all the world, making disciples, all of us talking about Israelites. Romans 10, 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who have believed our report. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the most high. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words into the ends of the world. To preach to who? To the Israelites scattered among the nations being called Gentiles. But I say, did not Israel know? First, Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, them that are not a people, right? Those that will not call my people, I will call you my people. And by a foolish nation will I anger you. But Esaias is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. The Israelites that were scattered among the nations when they didn't even know they was Israelites, they weren't seeking after the Most High. They sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel, what Israel? Israel from the Holy Land. But to Israel, he said, all day long I have stretched forth my hands into a disobedient and gainsaying people. Now, if you if you are a demon or just confused as hell, you can try to stretch that and twist it and make it seem like, see, it said Israel, but he's going to stretch his hand to a, another nation that didn't seek him. You can try to make that seem like it's other nations and somebody might believe that. If they demons or if they bugged out or they don't understand the Bible. But those of, the, of us that understand it and you brothers and sisters out there, don't let Jake take little scriptures that you know to be basic and make them into stumbling blocks 
for their own purpose because that's that's what they're doing. You read the scriptures with understanding and oftentimes right in the very same chapter in which you're trying to, you know, you get confused by in that same chapter gives you clues who is talking about mercy and glory is for Israelites. Ain't no glory for no other nation. We read that. Let's go back and then end it off with that. Romans 9 and verse 4 again. We'll start at 3 again. For I wish that myself were cursed from the anointed for my brethren my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of the Most High and the promises. Whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, the anointed came, who was overall power, blessed forever. Amen. Let's, let's, let's get to mercy. Luke, I believe it's, we'll see it here. Yeah, it's here. Luke 1, 6, 8, blessed be the Lord, power of Israel, for he have visited and redeemed his people. Now, we did see the mercy, the vessels of mercy, which was Jacob. The mercy is for Jacob. It ain't for the other nations. And has raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. There you go. Let's read a little more. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life, and thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. There you go. So them dudes was, was, they was majorly going off. Right? See that? I will call them my people which were not my people. That's the mystery of the Gentiles. And the Gentiles that it's speaking of is the Israelite foreigners. It ain't talking about two different, you know, groups of people as far as the Israelites and then everybody else. No, nah, what about if, if that's the case, when it said Israel and the Gentiles, Israel was talking about just the Israelites only. Well, that, that left out the, the scattered Israelites. Because back then you didn't have, hey, the scattering had not yet received it. They hadn't received it yet. When the book of Acts came, came, you had those Israelite farms from all, of, all over the earth, right? Acts 2 and 5 on down, they started coming back and they were receiving. The word was opened up unto them. When the, when the tongues, you know, when that whole, uh, the speaking in tongues and all of that. See? And these dudes even trying to say Cornelius is a, is a heathen now. No, Cornelius came, that opened up the way of salvation to the Israelites all over the earth. That's all it's talk about. They were being called Gentiles. These dudes are demons. They're going off, you know. So just sidestep them stumbling blocks and keep it rolling, brothers. Just jump over them stumbling blocks. Because don't, don't start uh, going backwards making things that are basic and understood, making them hard again. Because you see niggas like this. Because that's all they're doing. They're trying, to, they're trying to confuse brothers and sisters. But don't get confused. Rely on the Holy Spirit and, and read the word for what it says. It, it will explain itself. We'll see you soon, Lord willing. I will call to my people, which were not my people, Israelite foreigners, being joined. The middle wall of partition broke down, joined both, both houses of Israel together, or both uh, nations of Israel together. Right? Because the Lord said, I will no more, there shall no more be two nations, but one nation. All Israelites. That's in Ezekiel 37. Yeah, this thing messing up a little bit. When I recorded it was. By the time you see it, it won't be messed up, though, when you see it in post-production in the beginning. Anyway, all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.